Welcome to the Wall Street Crossover Show, brought to you by Tip TV in conjunction with our sponsors, Admiral Markets. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Darren Sinden, market commentator for Admiral Markets. Uh, morning to you, Darren. Morning, Nick. Um, if anyone's watching for the first time, um, what was the idea behind this program? Um, really, just to uh, to provide. Uh, viewers and anyone else who's interested with a with sort of bridge between what's happening in the European markets and what we expect to happen um, in the US markets just to give them a few pointers and ideas about what to look out for um, in you know in the second most important session of the day. Understood. Well clearly a good session in Europe this morning on the back of the latest Greek developments. Well the, the equity markets have certainly uh, you know interpreted it as such. Um, for, for our standpoint I, I'm still um, skeptical I am yeah you know yep. we, there's a, a, a broad framework if you like it's been agreed um, the terms of which are very loose um, where the Greeks are going to count you about 50 billion euros worth of, uh, of assets to, to put down as collateral against this uh, this fund that the EU want them to uh, to create is anyone's guess if they had 50 billion of decent assets lying around yeah. they would have done something with them already so anyway we'll see um, all, all the proposals are subject to ratification by uh, various parliaments probably the two most important though being the Greek and German parliaments um, and we'll know more about uh, how, how that's going uh, by Wednesday really understood okay well we've got a number of slides to go through let's go to the first slide data released over the European session okay. um, what's caught your imagination if that's the right word this morning away away from the Greek story which we'll come to in a moment um, balance of trade data from China another wilder sort of slightly erratic figure if you will from China um, a, a positive balance 46.4 billion was the was the number released but that was uh, sharply below uh, the 55.7 billion that was forecast and the prior read of, of a positive 59.4 billion so um, that they can be a bit wild these these China balance of trade numbers I, I can't offer you an explanation as to why there's such a big miss um, and we can't just take one number in isolation either but uh, um, it will be another you know concerning data point for those who are bearish on China and you know worrying about whether we're gonna ultimately have a hard or a soft landing as the economy can continues to, not necessarily to cool but just come perhaps to, to a more normalised level of growth. Um, so, you know, keep your eyes peeled from there. Um, and as we already just said, a uh, framework for a Greek deal was announced this morning. Um, basically, the Greeks have caved. Uh, the, the deal that's on offer is much worse than the one that they rejected in their national referendum just over a week ago. As I say, that one of the key things here is they've got to stump up uh, or, you know, Put, effectively put up 50 billion euros worth of decent assets as collateral into a, a fund that the uh, is going to be administered by uh, the Eurozone um, and ultimately they'll try and sell those assets off to help pay down um, some Greek debt and recapitalise the banking sector. It just strikes me as wishful thinking. I note uh, Salk Gen have commented on the uh, on the deal today and they retain their 65 percent chance of a, a Greek exit stance that's what they're saying doesn't okay. make any difference. Whereas the bookies have gone 12 to 1 on that there will no Greece will not exit yep, the so, EU this so year. Diverse opinions on this subject mm. as ever um, what it's meant for, for Europe was a, a sharp bounce in European equity markets uh, particularly in the DAX um, but also in the stock 600 the broader uh, measure of European equities. What's perhaps slightly surprising though is that bonds and the currency have been subdued. There was a, an initial spike in the euro against the dollar um, but it's sold off from that high and it, and it hasn't really looked like uh, it wants to play ball again. So the currency markets would appear to be sceptical. Equity markets seem to like it. Um, as I say we'll, by, the, by Friday we'll have a, a much clearer deal, or, or idea of what's going to happen. Wednesday is the deadline for Greece now to get the um, new legislation or the proposed legislation voted through their parliament. Understood. So. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. The European movers um, this morning. What's caught your attention here? Uh, well, uh, Deutsche Börse in uh, in Germany, uh, ticker DB1GR, um, sharply better up around 3.4% at 82 US 44. Um, DAX constituents, so it's benefited from the uh, the Greek rally, if what we can call it. But it was also upgraded this morning at Goldman's, oh, Goldman's uh, right. from neutral to buy. Um, their price target now uh, for a year, a year out, 101 euros, and they're talking about a 27% potential uplift. Uh, and if, if you're investing in Deutsche Börse here, um, and uh, back here in the UK, um, FTSE had a much more muted response to to the Greek news. Nonetheless, uh, the banks and financials were generally better. Uh, Barclays Bank 
274 up 2.2 percent hsbc 574.1 up 1.45 percent simply this uh, the reason for it the banks are seen as a sector most likely to benefit from an orderly i say that in inverted commas resolution yep. to the greek, the greek issue. issue yeah understood okay so let's move on to m a the rumors and movers in europe this morning um in terms of uh, m a we've actually got a deal um well, it was effectively a done deal because it's a recommended offer. Um, U.S. company Platform Speciality Products, PAH in the U.S., is buying um, a specialist materials group here in the U.K. called Allant. Uh, it's ticker ALNT. Uh, in Fantastic London. premium, 44%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like the old bull market. Yeah, up 44%. In fact, the deal uh, comes at uh, 503 per share uh, outright, which actually a 49% premium to Friday's close. So a small discount in the, in the market at the moment, but that's just probably... You know, discounting into the future when you actually get your money. Uh, Allen was formerly part of Cookson Group, a, a, a very old English name, but was spun out as an independent business in 2012. As I say, the bid's got the backing of both the Allen board and its major shareholder. Platform Speciality, or PAH, has uh, been very acquisitive in the last three years, so this will be his eighth deal uh, in, in that time space. Um, they say that that if they, you know, they secure Allen, it could save them around $50 million a year for the enlarged group. Um, what's interesting here is that, that, you know, probably over the last decade, the speciality uh, chemicals and materials sector has been getting progressively smaller and smaller in the UK as uh, companies are picked off. And, you know, two others in the, uh, in the sector that could, uh, that could benefit would be Bodycoat and uh, Elementis, both of which have been uh, bid targets and or candidates at least in the past so Understood. I would keep a close eye on both of those going forward. Okay so let's move on to the next slide the US data points to keep an eye on. Um, tumbleweed time I'm afraid as far as US data is concerned today just one uh, figure of note uh, the Treasury budget for June looking for uh, a surplus here of 51 billion dollars versus the prior uh, read of minus 82 a deficit of 82.4 billion dollars and a uh, a surplus of 70.5 billion a year ago. There's a lot of seasonality in this number, and it's simply because uh, you know there are certain dates where taxes are paid, and they they tend to bolster the finances, um, and other and other periods where uh, there aren't uh, flows coming into the U.S. Treasury, right. so they're spending money. But the trend has generally been improving, and, the, and you know the, the government right. seems to be getting close to belt towards balancing its books, um, which will I suppose be good news going into the presidential elections. Um, more important data points to look forward to though, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we've got things like uh, producer price index, industrial production, the Philly Fed, consumer price indices, and also housing starts. So, so there's you know, enough to get your teeth in the, week, yeah. the later in the week, understood. Okay, so let's wrap up with the final slide, the US pre-market movals and some chart levels. Okay, well I've just picked out one stock, um, in terms of uh, pre-market movers, and this was uh, Helen of Troy, which moved sharply higher after hours on Friday, up around 12.2%. Having said that, um, it had fallen in hours uh, by more than 10%, so after Q1 results, so it sort of slumped in, in normal trading, it, it rallied sharply after hours. It'd be interesting well. to see how it performs um, in, uh, in normal trading again this afternoon. It's a, it's a sort of a, a mini Procter & Gamble or Unilever, a personal and household products group. Um, so H E L E is the ticker there in the US. One to perhaps keep an eye on, if if only for uh, personal interest uh, later on this afternoon. And then in terms of levels, uh, so European equities are better as we said. So 6,700 now we'll go for as our downside level to break uh, in the FTSE base 6,750. If we're going to make further gains to the upside, the DAX has moved up uh, uh, more impressively. So 11,460 now will be our downside level. Plays 11,570 to the upside. Um, it's a mixed bag in the US really, the US markets were better on Friday but I don't think they were that convincing. Uh, 2056 uh, is the downside level now in the S&P plays 2085 and for the Dow we've penciled in 17635 on the downside plays the round number at 17,800. Perhaps the biggest disappointment today has been the performance of the Euro. Uh, as I said, an early spike uh, on the Greek news, but it's basically sold off and not look likely to recover from there. So 110.43 now is uh, a downside level, plays 110.83 to the upside. In Aussie US dollar, 74.12 plays 74.50. Uh, dollar yen, the yen just weakening slightly against the dollar. So 122.60 now, a downside level, plays 123.70 to the upside. And cable, um, again, firming up uh, against the dollar sterling there. So 155.30, a uh, downside level, plays 156.02 to the upside. Okay, and they're all the cash levels to people in terms of the, the indices, aren't they? Oh, yes. Just to 
reiterate that. Okay, Darren Sinden, market commentator, Admiral Markets. Thank you for your time as always. That wraps up the Wall Street crossover show. We'll be back tomorrow, one o'clock. Have a good day. Thank you. Mm-hmm.